Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is April and this is part two of the Everstone Hero Embroidery Machine where I'm going to show you how to make some patches. In part one, I showed you how to set the machine up so that it's ready to begin embroidering and in this video, we're finally going to make some patches. If you have your own original designs you want to turn into a patch like my Coolerpa logo right here, you will need to purchase an additional software to convert it into a patch file. I don't have the software, but Everstone was so kind to convert my Coolerpa logo for me to use in this video. I'll put all the links to the software down in my description box. They can be very pricey, but if making patches is something you're serious about, then it's a great investment. The machine already comes with a few designs inside of it already, but if you're looking for more options, you can always search up some online and purchase them. A website I used was called embroideryonline.com and that's where I got this bumblebee patch and this scissors patch and I attempted to make this roller skating patch. After purchasing your new designs, you will need to convert it one more time so that your machine can read it. So whatever conversion software that is made for your machine, make sure you use that. Everstone has a free software on their website for the Everstone Hero, so all I would have to do is download that software and then convert my files. After they are converted, I can drop them into my thumb drive and then plug it into the machine to use. Make sure you don't put the files into a folder though because the machine won't be able to find it. I did it the first time and nothing showed up. So the first thing you need is embroidery thread. These are isocord and they are 100% polyester. They're stronger than cotton and they also have some shine to it so it'll make your patches look pretty. So the first time I attempted to make the patch, I thought it would be okay to leave my bobbin thread with regular cotton thread and just have the polyester on top and the thread kept breaking and it also got all tangled in the back. The next very important thing I forgot to do the first time I attempted to make my patch was change the presser foot to an embroidery foot. An embroidery foot will just help keep your fabric under control and make sure things are laying flat. You also need to change your regular sewing needle to an embroidery needle because it's stronger and will be able to puncture through all those layers. All right, now I wanted to go over the different stabilizers that you can use. The first one is a lightweight stabilizer that is ideal for placing behind clothing if you want to embroider over a pocket or over your shirt or even behind a collar, but you wouldn't use this one for patches. Next is the heavyweight stabilizer and you can use this one to make patches because it's a lot more sturdy and I would recommend it for those designs that are a lot more intricate. The last stabilizer I have here in front of me is called Aqua Mesh, and it feels very soft like the lightweight stabilizer, but it was actually recommended to me by Everstone to make patches because this Aqua Mesh can actually dissolve in water, giving your patch a very clean look in the end. I did use the heavyweight one and the Aqua Mesh on two different patches. I used the heavyweight stabilizer on this one and the Aqua Mesh behind this one. And the difference between the two is just that this one feels a lot more sturdier and more stiff and this one feels a lot more flexible so it can move with your clothing better. Lastly, the kind of fabric you want to use is bottom weight fabric. Don't use anything too light because it might just tear the fabric while you're embroidering. I use denim for both of these. This is a lighter weight one and this is a heavier weight denim and both of them turned out fine. I actually prefer working with the lighter weight denim just because I was able to create a way cleaner look and trim away the raw edges a lot better compared to the heavier denim. You'll also need some fabric adhesive spray because you don't want to sandwich too many layers in the embroidery hoop. First, cut two pieces of stabilizer that are a little bit bigger than the hoop. Sandwich the two pieces in the hoop and tighten the screw as tight as it will go. If it's not tight enough, the stabilizer will pop out in the middle of sewing, which will ruin everything.
Connect the hoop to the machine and open up your design by clicking the USB option. Once your design is selected, you can rotate it by pushing this button and you can enlarge it or shrink it by 20% by pushing the magnifying glass button. And you can even reposition your design on the hoop by holding down the arrow button. For this first patch, I want to start at the very bottom, so I'm holding on to the down button. The machine will automatically stop because it knows how much space it needs for the patch. After making my adjustments, I press OK and press the play button to start sewing. My patch has a rectangular border around it, so that's what the machine will stitch first. It will only do an outline so you can see the size of the patch, and then afterwards the machine will stop and you can take out the hoop. Now cut a piece of fabric that will cover the shape of your patch. Spray some fabric adhesive to the back of it and stick it over the stitched area. You don't want to spray the stabilizer because it's in the hoop and the hoop will get sticky like mine. And you also don't want to take out the stabilizer after it's been sewn because you'll mess up the positioning on the machine. Place the hoop back in and press play to continue where it left off. Now it's going to re-sew the rectangle border to attach the fabric to the stabilizer. automatically stop so you know what to do next and it's telling me to change my color thread but what I'm also going to do is take the hoop back out and trim away the extra fabric since the fabric is already attached to the stabilizer. I'm trimming as close as possible to the stitch line as I can because if you don't the raw edges will be sticking out later like this which is not a cute look. Place the hoop back in and continue sewing. Since I don't need to make any more stops, I just press the play button and let my machine do all the work. My Cooler Pa logo was designed by my talented cousin Anisha. I'll put all the links to her art down in my description box if you're interested in checking it out. This is why I trim the fabric so close to the stitch line because when the border is being sewn, it will completely conceal the raw edges giving it a clean and professional look. Once the patch is made, don't rush to take it out of the hoop because you can still add a few more patches above it. Since I positioned my first patch at the very bottom, I'm just going to leave this one centered. And after the second patch is done, I can even fit one more at the very top by holding onto the up arrow to reposition my hoop. A good tip if you're unsure about the size of your patch is to print them out on paper first, which will also be helpful if you want to embroider your clothes, that way you can see where you want your patch to be placed. 
After I've made the most use of my stabilizer, I can finally take the hoop out, clip away all of the jump stitches, and cut the patches out. Don't cut too close to the border because you don't want to clip any threads. This is why the aqua mesh is awesome because even if you leave a little bit of white along the border, all you have to do is take a little bit of water and dab it away with your finger or a q-tip and it magically dissolves. Here's what the patches look like if you trim the edges versus leaving it. For the black and white one, I didn't trim the rectangle at all and just cut the patch out with the stabilizer all at once at the end. The black and blue one, I did trim it but because the denim was so thick, it was hard to get close to the stitch line so some of the threads are sticking out. And then finally with the pink and blue ones, I think I perfected it. Next, I wanted to show you a design that requires more than one color. The machine will automatically stop when the next color needs to be added, and all you have to do is clip the needle thread and switch the colors. You never need to change the bobbin thread, just make sure your bobbin is completely full so it doesn't interrupt your sewing. The bobbin thread also doesn't need to match the color you have on top, so just a white color or any light color thread is fine. If you want to turn these into iron-on patches, you can buy some fuse and seal cut away and apply it to the back side, which will also help cover some of that crazy stitching in the back. I hope this video was helpful for those of you interested in getting an embroidery sewing machine. For a list of everything I talked about and mentioned in this video, check out my description box. Also, I want to do a giveaway on these three cotton candy color cooler foot patches I made. One giveaway will be on my Instagram, another one will be on my Snapchat, and the last one will be on my Patreon page. So if you're interested in entering the giveaway to win one of these patches, check out my description box for all the rules. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!